Welcome. Well, I hope you guys are feeling good. I know that um, I've talked to a lot of you and I know myself, um, a lot of people have been feeling really tired lately um, and needing more sleep. And that's part of that Taurus energy that we're in that's wanting us to slow down and simplify and take care of ourselves. And, you know, we start to like notice um, kind of the needs of the body, right? And so it's a great time to be listening to those needs and allowing yourself to take that, you know, as, um, as much as you can to take what you need and to provide yourself with what your body's calling for. So this week, um, I feel that the nervous systems might need some extra special care. Um, Mercury is the planet of communication and it's kind of our thoughts, our plans. Um, it does rule our nervous system and it's moving into the sign of Taurus, which it should feel a lot better um, than in areas where we get kind of antsy. Um, but the mind might kind of want some support through the body for calming. So if you notice yourself feeling like ungrounded, kind of jittery, or just like a, an essence, like of just feeling like un, um, unsettled, or um, then it's a great time to really take care of your body and kind of orient mind and body, right? Which is why we do yoga, right? We do yoga to connect our mind and our body. But especially this week, um, paying extra um, special care to how we can allow the mind to slow down a bit and stabilize through our body because it's also a great time on the tandem side to really innovate, right? This is a time to um, make new plans, but make more innovative plans. So it's like taking what you thought you were doing and now like adding um, adding something new to it or changing it up. So twists are gonna be good, which will work some twists this week. Um, up being upside down is good, inversions. Um, and again, just ch I've been feeling the need this week just to like change up my routine. So I've tried this week to start my um, day differently and to try some new things this week. And that's always a good way for me to kind of help myself, like when I'm feeling stuck or stagnant or I don't know a direction, to kind of switch it up. So nervous system care this week, connecting mind and body, making sure you can give your mind practices to calm and stabilize when you need it. That's kind of the name of the game this week. So we'll focus that with our practice through kind of emotional resetting because the moon's in cancer today and it will be through Wednesday evening. So our emotions need tending to, um, it's a good time to kind of like pay attention to if we're not dealing with our emotions, how it affects our nervous system, right? Or how it makes us feel. Um, so I noticed myself last week, like feeling like I wasn't really attending to my emotions. And then I was like, I felt just so tired and needed to kind of reset. So curious if you guys are feeling that you can always put it in the chat if you are. Um, but yeah, so I guess just take a moment to find your body, um, to connect to your body in whatever way. You can and just notice kind of what's there. If more than anything, our practice gives us a chance to like meet up with ourselves, right? To say what's going on in that body and mind and that mind and mind. So kind of just taking that emotional temperature. The emotions tend to act when they're not kind of taken care of like little children, right? Where certain little things will provoke us to feeling like really upset or we'll feel really tender. Kind of wearing our heart on our sleeves. So just kind of noticing. Let's take five like long deep breaths, just checking in. Softening shoulders and jaw, letting yourself settle. Slowing down the energy. Hmm. One more. So for you, notice if there's a part of your body where you feel like maybe like there's energy stagnating if there's a part of your body that you feel like needs some extra TLC. Or just energetically anything you need. And I, I invite you to bring that into your practice today. So whether it's through what you want to ask me to do, if you want to put on, make an intention, you've got to put yourself on off mute and make an intention or just to allow that movement to be a way to take emotional energy and put it in motion, right? To let it pass through us so it doesn't stagnate and accumulate, right? Um, okay, so let me know if there's anything that's shifted, if you want to work with. Otherwise, let's come on to our mat. 
So if you have a block or two, great. If you don't, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna come to downward facing dog. And then right away, just kind of letting the hips kind of swing side to side. And you might turn this into kind of a vinyasa where you bend the knees and turn the toes to one side and drop the hips. Inhaling, lifting, exhaling. And I'm kind of bouncing. I tend to notice that it's kind of nice sometimes to move energy out by just a slight little bouncing motion. So whether you just want to drop the heels, lift and drop the heels, or you want to add that squat. Just moving your body, wave-like motions. Inhaling and exhaling. And then coming to a pause and just, again, shaking up the head, letting the face be soft, the tongue, the jaw. Really allowing the four corners of the neck to stretch, the front of the throat, the back, the sides. And then step your right leg forward and take a corner turn so that you're in a wide angle fold. Grab onto your elbow creases and sway. Breathing. <sighs> a couple more breaths. Then as you're ready, turning back to the front edge of your mat, stepping forward and nice and slowly rolling up. Head, neck, and shoulders being last and then rolling those shoulders a few times. So we're just gonna flow a little bit, just kind of get the body moving. And I want you to really focus the breath being kind of the metronome of your pace. So However you're breathing, kind of let your synchronicity of your movement match that. So if you go slower than me, totally fine. If you go faster, totally fine. On the inhale, stretch your arms up. And on the exhale, bend the knees and fold forward. Inhale, come up to a halfway lift. Exhale and fold. And then bend those knees and roll up. Hands by the hips and just long spine. Inhale. Grounding breath to the heels, exhale. Do that same movement again. Inhale, exhaling, bend the knees forward, folding, letting the neck be soft. Inhaling to a long spine, broadening across the chest, exhaling. And then bending the knees, rolling up, stacking head over shoulders, and then full breath in, grounding breath out. And the next time you inhale, take your arms up. Exhaling, forward fold. Coming to all fours, inhale. Sending the hips back, exhale. Then we're gonna come forward, hips dropping, kind of like a modified upward dog. And then exhaling, child's pose. And you're gonna do this three more cycles. And you can kind of reorient your knees and ankles to be in one line, and then you can bring the ankles back. Two more times. Feel free to stay pretty weighted on the knees if this is bothering your low back. Coming up to all fours, kind of restacking joints if you need to, and then cat cow four times. Inhale, exhale, letting the head really drop, finding the strength of your core, then belly relaxes. Exhale. So Cancer, the moon is ruled, uh, kind of rules the stomach. So sometimes like stuck emotions get in our stomach and we'll notice that by our stomach kind of tightening and holding tension. Then the exhale, downward facing dog. Inhaling forward to plank. Exhaling to downward facing dog. Just keeping that flowing movement. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. The next time you inhale, step your right leg forward between your hands, left knee down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. And you might even push back a bit. Inhale, exhale. And then inhale, exhale, hands to the heart. Push back maybe as you lengthen up. Inhale, exhale, sink. 
and then inhale, lengthen, exhale, hands to your heart. One more time, just kind of re-lengthening, and then exhale, and you can do it again, inhale, exhale, hands to the floor. Step and fold forward, top of your mat. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, fold, bend those knees, round and roll all the way up to standing. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Long spine, inhale. Exhale, step the left leg back for a high lunge. So taking your time, inhaling, coming up, exhaling down, a little bit lower. And now just holding the pose as you breathe. So there might be like micro movements that you feel, but just finding some stability, getting some warmth through the hips. Softness through the shoulders. And inhale, re-lengthen, then exhaling all the way down to the mat. Downward facing dog. And then coming back to the knees on the mat. So we're gonna kind of add a little bit of a side bend. So inhaling, exhaling, however you wanna do this, but just stretching through the side waist of your body. So just side to side. I can kind of really kind of move my hips along with me or I can just really stretch through the side waist. And then re lengthen and exhale, downward facing dog. That plank to down dog flow again. So feel free just to keep it kind of straight spine as you do this, or you can roll your way into plank and then roll your way back. Couple more. Then the next time you're, uh, you're breathing in, you're going to step the left leg forward between your hands, right knee down, and then inhale, we rise up. We exhale, hands to the heart. And then again, we might back the hips up to get a little bit more length, and then exhale forward. And then re-lengthen, and then exhale. It doesn't really matter what your hands are doing. I know I kind of switch it up each time. <laughs> doesn't matter. We're just trying to get a little bit of flow feeling in the body. Just kind of easing into the hips. And then one more breath cycle. And then exhaling hands to the earth. Step and fold forward, top of the mat. Then next inhale, long deep breath. Remember you're going at whatever pace that your body is dictating. And then rolling up. Exhaling hands to the heart. Inhale, long spine, stretch. Folding forward, exhale. Inhale, long spine. And then stepping your right leg back for a high lunge. So take your time, no rush here. And even though we're not necessarily moving up and down our arms, just there could be micro movements of lifting and lowering, almost like the pose could breathe. There's life in the pose, there's flow, there's movement. And just letting sensation be an invitation to explore, to allow in, to allow to release. One more breath. Then exhaling, hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Bringing your right leg up to kind of, kind of pause, to breathe, uh, kind of bring some awareness to your hamstring. And then you're gonna bring your right knee in towards your nose, pause, feel your core. Then that right leg goes up and back. Step your right leg forward between your hands and come into reverse warrior. So peel to arch, inhaling. And then exhaling, sink a little lower. Inhaling, hands down to the floor for a low lunge twist. So I might walk my right foot over and then twist. Then again, having some life in the pose. So maybe that's kind of a lifting and lowering. Just allowing the kind of legs to stay left. I like to look at the floor when I need some grounding. Then as you're ready, both hands to the floor. Now we're gonna cat cow. So I'm gonna bend the knees and lift the chest. And then exhale, I'm gonna cat the back and kind of lift my belly. Then I'm gonna bend the knees, lift my chest. Exhale, and I can use blocks under my hands. Two more. And 
And then a low lunge, knee comes back down, inhale. This sort of prayer twist to the right. So I'm gonna let my hips come forward and then turn and twist, but again, I can look down, so it's a more grounding twist. So although my heart lifts away from my thighs, my head and my uh, neck can be a little bit more easy. Breathing in, breathing out. A couple more breaths. Just kind of noticing the movement of your body as you breathe. So you don't feel like you're kind of just still and locked in place. Now as you're ready, unbind yourself, hands to the mat, and then downward facing dog. Full breath cycle in and out just to settle. Feel all that movement. Then that left leg will float up. And again, just finding a sensation of the hamstring and then bringing that knee into the nose and pausing so that you can feel the lift of the thigh to the nose, the head dropping, left leg up and back. Step it forward for a warrior two, right into reverse warrior. So I'm gonna turn around so I have a different orientation for you. And I'm gonna reach up and back and I can look down towards my foot. And then as I'm ready, I'm gonna cartwheel my hands to the floor, taking my time for a low lunge twist. And I can look at the earth. <sighs> Couple more breaths. And then hands are gonna frame that left foot. I'll drop to the hips, so I'm nice and heavy, but I'm feeling the strength of my legs, my chest lifts, and I cat my back, my neck gets heavy. Inhale, and again, blocks can help. Exhale, couple more, inhale. I want you to really connect your core here so that your neck and jaw can be easy. And then exhale, and then drop that knee down, lift up, inhale. Prayer twist to your left. So you can set the elbow on the thigh, and if you don't want to touch it, you can just hinge. But it is nice at times to kind of use that elbow to thigh connection to churn the belly, but then gaze down. Breath in and out. Letting your body move if it needs to. And then as you're ready, hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Take your time as you get there. Just settle. So maybe a little bit of stillness to settle, to bubble the lips, to sigh. <sighs> really allowing yourself to meet whatever pops up. It could momentarily pop up to meet you or it could stay present. Just again, breathing it in and out, just noticing like waves. And as you're ready, the right leg is going to step forward between your hands, spin the back heel flat, go back to reverse warrior. Look down at the earth. And as you're ready, you're going to straighten that right leg and tip into triangle pose. Take your time to really set into your body so that you have the, the support of your legs and your hips. You can look up, you can look down again. Now inter-rotate that top arms that lays at the small of your back and then look down or gaze at your front foot. So I can continue to turn my waist up, but I can let my shoulder relax down. And as you're ready, releasing the hands to the floor, pop the back knee down again. So we're gonna do a little twist here, but we're gonna change it up. So I'm gonna give you a side profile here. So if I can, I'm gonna do that printer twist, but I'm gonna allow, if I can, the elbow to come to the outside edge of the thigh. So it's a much deeper twist. I'm gonna hold on to the side of my hip, and I can just stay on my knee, relax or look down, or I can lift the back thigh. So I'm just kind of using my hand at my hip to just kind of relax the tissues of the outer hip joint. So I can firm up my inner thigh, I can look down. And I can do all of this with my knee down. Keep breathing. Hmm. 
And then one more breath cycle. I'm just going to turn my orientation. Okay, friends. And then again, you can uh, pause. So now that we've uh, uh, kind of gotten a little warmer, if you can bend the knees and then you can straighten the front leg. So I can bend the knee, lift the chest, and then I can straighten the front leg. I could also do this with my knee down. So again, I don't want to rush you because I know not everyone moves at the same pace. So just take your time. It's really just the most important that you're breathing and that you're letting your body move at the pace that lets you kind of feel like you're in sync with yourself. And then hold that hamstring stretch wherever you are. So my back heel is lifted. I'm just gonna let that neck shake out, shake out. And then as I'm ready, the knee comes down. I'm in that low lunge. Again, adding on a little bit. So I'll show you that side profile. I'm gonna exhale and twist. So I can stay here and look down, or I can pop, pop my back knee up. And the vinyasa could be tapping the knee up and down. That's one way to work it. Or I can be coming up and coming down. Coming up to float, tapping the toe down. So I want you just to play with us and really work that leg strengthening, right? So pressing into that forward heel, feeling the strength of your back leg. So those good grounding, rooting muscles with a little bit of flow. So it's okay if you're kind of wobbly and it feels a little funky. So a couple more. And then as you're ready, hands to the floor. This time, time turn back into that wide leg pull. So again, hands to the uh, elbows, hands here. You can sway your hips. You can allow your body to sway side to side, just rocking, assimilating. Really let yourself bubble your lips, sigh, no one can hear you. <laughs> make all the funny noises you couldn't make in a live class or in a studio. And then turn towards the front of your mat, downward facing dog. So the traditional vinyasa that we take, I'm gonna let you take five of these at your own pace, whatever it looks like. So inhaling forward to plank, I'm gonna show you a little modified version. Knees down, chaturanga to your belly. Inhale, rising to cobra and then pressing back to child's pose. So that can be one variation, showing you a different one. Just keep going, you're gonna do five. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You can come to down dog if you want in between. And again, three more, just like that. So allowing this to kind of just be like a flushing or recentering. It can even just be cat cow. But something that kind of signifies for your body like a recycling, a flushing, a cleansing. So I, I want you to be creative with that. It could be something different than you've done before. And then when you feel ready, downward facing dog. <sighs> Settling in. If the child's pose is a more favorable posture for that, please let that happen. Feeling hands anchoring to the earth, feet, even just simple, some parts of the feet that anchor, maybe the heels don't anchor, but feeling connected, hands, feet. Connecting your core to your hands, your core to your feet. Then the left leg's gonna step forward for extended, I'm um, sorry, for reverse warrior. So when you're ready, stepping on, and again, we're looking back and down. It could be a bending and a straightening of the front leg. It could be a lifting and a lowering of the heel. All kinds of micro movements that make you not feel stagnant, that keep energy moving while they allow you to ground and settle. Then as you're ready, straightening that front leg, solid, solidifying the legs, finding the core before you reach into your triangle pose. And I can let my look down today. Connecting to that core energy, and then the top arm internally rotates and come to the, comes to the small of the back. Then I'm going to let the neck go or turn face down. So whatever allows me to relax a little bit more. If 
Big breaths. And as you're ready, releasing, the hands come to the floor. And we're gonna do that twist. So again, I'm gonna show you that side profile. So the arm reaches up and then I'm gonna twist and try to get the arm all the way down. So it may not work on both sides, right? So you may not be able to grab the hip. But it's a, and I might just use the hand to kind of roll the thigh and the arm could just open up, right? So breathing, maybe you pop the back knee up, maybe you don't. Look down, relax the neck. And then just release the hands to the floor. So back to the vinyasa of the kind of the cat cow movement where we inhale and then straighten the front leg. You can be on your knee, rocking back and forward. So don't let yourself get rushed and out of your own synchronicity. So part of that cancer energy is like, I'm in flow with me, with what I need. Holding that hamstring stretch. Can you feel the pelvis kind of lighten up on that front thigh a little bit, just to allow yourself to feel a little lighter. And as you're ready, knee to the mat, come back into your low lunge. Here's that prayer twist with options. So I could just repeat and look down. Maybe it's uh, allowing me to twist a little deeper and release. Maybe it's the knee tapping. Maybe it's coming into that balance pose. So I'll have to, again, check it out. But if it causes me to tense up my neck, or you see I'm wobbling today, and maybe that's not the right choice, I just can choose something else. I can try it out, come in, come out, doesn't matter. And then last one. And then releasing, taking that quarter turn to that wide leg fold. Again, you can just allow your hips to rock. Sometimes that's all we need to do is just kind of move the pelvis. Gives a different sensation. If you'd rather go towards Skandasana side to side, please do that. Hmm. Then you're when you're ready, settle. So maybe it's gonna be a down dog, kind of arm looking variation in your prasarita. Let the head go. Hmm, one more breath. And then towards the front edge of your mat, downward facing dog or child's pose. And then again, five of those vinyasas. So whatever that is for you, whether that's cat-cow, whether it's uh, a modified vinyasa, a full bore, whatever you're feeling, five times. And again, I want you to really pay attention to your breath so that you're not pulling your breath along with your movements, but more the movements give the breath an opportunity to really even out, smooth out. So it might, might be non-habitual to do that, right? To really let the breath when you notice yourself shortening it to go faster, you can just put your knees down or do something that allows you to stay in sync with your breath. And after the five breath cycles, either a downward facing dog or a child's pose or some place to reset. <sighs> Breathing in, resettling. Feeling what touches the mat, feeling what we can relax, what we can sense. And then when you're ready, right leg forward, reverse warrior. Our old friend, turning into a neck release. So hand to the hip, right arm lowers towards the right upper thigh. You stretch out that palm and broaden across your chest. So my hands at my hips, so I have a little active resistance. Sink into those legs. So if you need to look down instead of release your neck, that's fine. So really feel what's supporting you. So maybe you need to wiggle your toes. 
feel your core active and strong, not gripping, right? But just active. And then how do I let go of this uh, upper half? How do I let the shoulders drip down a little further, the neck stretch a little more, the jaw be more easy? Two more breaths. Focus breaths to the neck and upper shoulder, jaw. Then use your back hand, your left hand, to lift your head nice and slow. Go back to a reverse warrior for a moment. And then straightening that right leg, coming into triangle with the half bind. Or if you'd like to come into a half moon. So if we're going to come into a half moon, we're going to come up a bit if that's okay. And we'll turn the hip point slightly out and forward. And I want you just to kind of come in and then in, come out. And then nice and slow, come in and come out. Trying to firm up that inner thigh line like we've been working so that we don't um, overwork the outer hip. And then on the last one, then we can just stay. And it could be a hovering, could be a hand to the heart. Once you find the solidity of your inner thigh line, rooting into the big toe line of your arch, that slight lift to the outer foot line, then see if you can lift your pelvis by the strength of your core. See if the um, inner thigh line of your floating leg and the outer thigh line of your lifted leg can be evenly matched in how they lift. And then as you're ready, go ahead and ground that foot. Orient your hips to face forward. And we're gonna come up for a lunge, inhale. And as we exhale, we're gonna float the arms back and hinge. Bend the knees, inhale. Maybe a little back arch. Straighten the legs, hinge forward, exhale. And again, you're gonna go as slow as you want, so there's no rush to do this. And then the next time we come up, we're gonna inhale. We're gonna to step to the big toe side of our left foot, float the arms back and come into a warrior. Ooh. And then sometimes we come in and out without even wanting to. And then we're gonna come into a little squat, so hug that knee up. Pause for a moment and kind of feel the inner thighs squeeze together. And then go ahead and come all the way to a seat. So if you need to prop yourself up with a blanket under your right hip, go ahead and do that, or even a block works. We'll lengthen up with the left arm, then we'll exhale, twist to the right. So it could be kind of a lifting up and then a lowering down. If you liked that twist variation that we did earlier, I could hug and kind of hold on to the hip, kind of giving a different variation. If you wanted to take a half bind, you could obviously do that. I could bind both of my arms like, oh, not happening for me today, but that might work for you. Breathing. Okay, big breath in. So as you come back, we're gonna come back into that little squat. So. I'm going to come in and I'm just squeezing everything in. My foot could even be down just to kind of squeeze everything in. And then come all the way up to standing. All the way up to standing. We're going to find a prayer twist still to the right. So I'm still going to kind of turn and twist to the right. So that could be where I stay. If I want to, I can pick the left leg up and work on a balance pose, a little strengthening. Right, I could extend the leg back, bent knee or straight leg, revolved half moon variation. Could even do this with a half bind. Lock could help. Yeah, I just want you to find a different variation of a twist, something a little different. So I'm gonna show you a block. So this works too. Have an internal rotated bind. I'm turning at the waist, lifting the back leg. 
Then after a moment or two, just let the leg come down and then just rest, let it go. Maybe even bouncing by bending and straightening the legs. So you can let the shoulders and the neck go. Hmm. Then from here, just kind of gently climbing down. Coming onto a seat for a different type of flow here to reset between the sides. So letting the chest be proud. So the hands can turn out or the hands can turn in. It really depends on kind of what's happening with your own shoulders. So take your time and kind of setting that up so that you can let the chest be proud. And you'll notice my low back doesn't sag because I'm really using my core to lift up. So I'm going to inhale. And I'm gonna exhale, coming into some core work. Inhale, exhale. So if this bothers your hip flexors, friends, then please come down and inhale, and then you can exhale. So I can do the same type of work. Yeah, but just a little bit. So pay attention to what your shoulders might call for. Let's do this uh, three more times. And then all the way down onto your back to reset. You can bind the arms, come into a bridge. You could wiggle the toes. You can lift the heels. Shake it out. One more breath. Let go of the arms, roll down nice and slow. Okay, rock and roll yourself up, downward facing dog. So final side, I'm actually gonna turn as well, I'll have to turn when I go to work too. You guys stay where you are. All right, you know the drill, left leg forward, reverse warrior. We're gonna turn into a neck release, so we hand at the hip, left arm extends out away from us and we look down. We broaden through the collarbones, or we let the head go, yeah? So I can stretch the left side of the neck, or I can turn and just let the head have a different orientation. So if you feel a lot of compression in your low back, you might kind of lift up and go back, so you still feel that there's some core work going on. We just try to decongest the upper region of the body. Stretch out your thumb and your pinky line. Okay, one more breath. Using the hand to lift the head, arms out, and then we'll go back into reverse warrior just for a moment before we come into triangle. We're gonna take our time in triangle, so allowing the body to guide its way down, and then it's that half bind. So you could just be staying here, working neck release, repeating triangle again. Or remember we had that option to kind of come up a bit so that I'm more upright, kind of gives me a better chance to find that inner thigh line. And I'm gonna lift up and come back down. Maybe, right? I, I may not go very far, but I want you to keep working that inner thigh connection. And then if you get there, after maybe five times, remember we wanna feel that kind of energy from pelvis to inner foot to root. We wanna feel the pelvis lift up and off the left thigh a little bit. And then the, Inner thigh line and the outer thigh line with vigor, right? Equally reaching away from the floor. So if we overdo one of those, we'll tend to feel that in the low back. So just paying attention. And as you're ready, step on back. You might come back into that triangle and then the hands are gonna come down. And this is where we uh, come into a high lunge, I believe. Sometimes I can't remember. <laughs> so we're gonna go here, and then we'll straighten that leg, hinge forward. Bend the knee, come on up. Pelvis tips forward, arms back. Everything's in like roughly sets of five. So you can go at your own flow and rhythm. There's really no reason to rush, right? We're all gonna end up at the same place. So don't let my sequencing or my cueing 
brush you. Because we want to stay connected to our own bodies, right? To the sensation, to what's happening, to how we better support. And then as we're ready, the arms reach up. We step a little closer, and then we come into a warrior three. Lifting. And then coming into that squat, so we curl up with the core, really find some connection to the rest of our body, and then we take a seat. This is where I could prop myself up on a block if the left hip feels like it's uh, elevated. So I'll show you that. And then I'm going to reach up and twist, and I can hold on to my hip like I was showing you before, maybe. Maybe I'm binding, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just kind of letting my neck go or relaxing. Couple deep breaths to relax your jaw. And as you're ready, as we come off this block, we come back into that mini squat, whatever that looks like for you. So whether it's a higher squat, and then we come all the way up to standing. Inhale. Exhale, prayer twist to the left. So this will look a lot of different ways. So I can stay in my prayer twist, and maybe I just lift the leg, and that's kind of my start to developing more strength in the standing leg. Maybe as the heel lifts, I find the back strength of my floating leg, and I can shoot it back or find a variation that works. You can just stay here, too, you know, and just work this. Okay, one or two more breaths. And then as you're ready, come out of the shape. Inhale, the arms come up. And then exhaling, forward fold. Whatever you gotta do, shake and wiggle. And then coming onto our um, seat. So putting the knees down when you feel ready, coming into a seat. Okay, so the same flow of lifting the hips, if you want to lift a leg as well, and then exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Three more. If you uh, need to do a sixth one because you're lifting the leg, feel free. Or you can just do one without the legs. <sighs> On the last one, we roll down, and then we come into that bridge. So binding the hands. <sighs> Letting the shoulders draw away from the earlobes. Binding our legs and our feet. Unbinding the arms and the legs and then rolling down. Let the knees knock together and the feet go a little wider for a moment. <sighs> okay, so we're going to flip over onto our belly for a few belly down back bends to kind of once again, invigorate the back body. So this one's a different variation of kind of like a bow pose because you're not gonna grab your ankles. That's the trick. So it's so tempting to wanna grab them, but for this one, you really wanna activate the gluteus muscle by really imagining you're drawing your heels towards the sky. So let's just do the lower half first. So I'm, I'm gonna turn my head just because I don't want the, my voice to be muffled, but I would just put your forehead on the mat like so. Okay, so bend those knees, and one at a time, can I use your glute strength to lift the leg off the mat, yeah? So I'm pulling my navel towards my spine, and I'm pressing through the heel. The more you press through the heel, the more you're going to feel your glutes. So just kind of one at a time, yeah? You can feel that. And then maybe I can lift both. It's a lot of glute work. If that doesn't feel right, then I want you just to focus on just the one leg lifts. If it feels okay, you can lift the upper half, just like so, so I can kind of give my neck some support by letting my forehead 
or I can reach the arms back. So my chest is lifted, my arms lift, so my triceps engage, and I'm pressing through those heels. I like to activate the feet. So ideally, you would not have external rotation in your legs, but depending on your own body, that may or may not be possible to control. Three, two, and relax. Shake those hips out, relax through your belly. <sighs> Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. If that one isn't satisfying or just isn't working for you, you can replace it with the locust with straight legs. But we're gonna kind of play with this one a little bit. So move your legs a little closer if you had a tremendous amount of external rotation which caused your low, low back to feel a little pull or a little achiness. You might just kind of start with lifting the arms, feeling the core, and then bend those knees and lift. So really, really feeling the glutes lift, or the glutes engage, the chest lift, and then maybe straightening the legs from there, keeping the glute hamstring activation, extending from crown to feet, and let it go. Shake it out. Shake it out. Breathing in, breathing out. <sighs> okay, friends. Pushing up and back to either um, an all fours, like a puppy dog, where you can let your low back iron out. I even like grabbing the elbow creases and letting my forehead fall. We just want to get the pelvis to kind of tilt forward and rest upon the thigh bones and just kind of get a little reset for the lumbar. So if straightening your arms feels good, great. If you'd like to just rest your head on your forearms, that's good too. A couple of rest to <sighs> let go. Okay, slowly putting the hands underneath. So I want you to pick an inversion of choice to do. An inversion just means, again, your hips are over your heart. So that could be repeating a wide leg fold, a holding a down dog. Down dog at the wall can be really nice because you can use your heels pressing against the wall if you can't get your heels to the floor. Um, if handstand in your practice, handstand is great. Um, Kind of feeling what would work for you. Headstand. And if you're not, if you're not kind of privy to knowing any type of inversion, let's do together a uh, down dog at a wall. So I can start with all fours with my toes tucked under and my heels on the wall. And then I'm going to lift the hips and walk the toes forward. Then I can kind of use the grounding action of my heels towards the wall to give me something to press into. And of course, if you'd like something else, you can walk up the wall for handstand. Keep your breath nice and rich. And if your mind wanders, counting your breaths can be something new. Let the mind help you focus on your breath work. Okay, one more big breath in. And then as you're ready, coming down, relaxing. Kind of having a moment to just take that in, of being upside down, what that's like what you feel. Hmm. Okay. Gonna give you a couple options for um, pigeon pose. So I'm gonna come into pigeon with my knee kind of towards my wrist and my heel towards my hip point. So um, you'll keep your knee joint uh, closed so I don't have an open knee joint. And if, when you do this, you notice, like for me, my right hip's quite elevated. I'll use a block or a blanket so that I can allow my right sitting bone and hip to have something to release under. So a pillow works, um, a, a rolled up blanket works, a block works.
So I might enjoy just staying upright. That might feel good if my hip flexors feel a little tight today. I can come down to my forearms. That works too. I could thread my needle. For me, that one doesn't feel as good, but I do like sometimes a side stretch. So I like that one. Or even just like, again, fist for the forehead. So I want you to really like go for comfort here. So what would feel yummy for you? Because part of that cancer energy is like nurturing, it feels good, not like working and gutting yourself through something. But it's like, what would like let my spirit be able to relax? What would nurture me? What would allow me to let go? And everyone's different with what allows them to let go and feel safe to feel safe to pay attention to really use your breath here especially if the sensation is strong maybe you kind of come out of the sensation a bit so that you can be more relaxed or maybe it's that really important work of feeling and then sending your breath and awareness there and just abiding in your presence kind of de-escalating whatever intensity is there with your breath. See if you can soften the belly here. So again, trying to get that belly region to relax. And then as you're ready, in the next couple breaths or so, there might be a little wiggling and moving. I want you to kind of find your way out and into the second side, whether that means you come to a cat-cow, whether you'll come from a kind of a flip dog or rolling the hip. You know, we all kind of need different things. That's a big pose. So take what you need, and then when you're ready, your second side. So I'll aim the knee towards the wrist. You know, kind of a wide as I need to be heel towards the hip point, and then just kind of assessing if something underneath my hip would help me to relax and ground. So that could be a block, a blanket. And then I could stay up and then slowly climb down. And then I could use a second block or a pillow to thread the needle, good side body twist. But again, comfort's what we're going for easefulness, being able to dissipate energy through our breath and relaxation. So it's like when we comfort and calm the body, like other parts of ourselves can be calm, can relax. So that works for the mind too, like getting comfortable in the body, letting the body feel easeful, right? The mind can tend to want to settle a bit easier than if our body is really tense and we're moving really fast. But we might have to move fast first in order to slow down. Letting the jaw go, maybe sighing. Take your last few breaths. Softening the belly. And then as you're ready to come out, slowly make your way out. And again, you're going to choose an exit that feels good for you, whether that's windshield wipering, cat-cow, <sighs> taking your time to let your body ease on out of that. And then when you're finished with that cycle of kind of flowing movement, then I want you to head towards your back. So taking your time to head there. And for some of us, knocking the knees together and widening the feet will feel supportive or just bending the knees. If you have a wall space there and you want to walk your feet up the wall, that is also a nice uh, practice. Either with your hips flush to the wall or your hips like 10 inches away so that you have kind of like a 45 degree angle with your legs. So that's another option. So 
yeah, kind of tune in, even bridge with a block under your sacrum with your legs up. So I know a lot of you know what you would want to do, so find that, okay? And we're going to do a little energetic work to kind of, again, allow that rejuvenation, that cleansing, that softening of the energy, of the emotional energy. So as you kind of become comfortable, make sure you're comfortable. And place your hands wherever that might be supported for you. So if that's your hips, your heart, your belly, right? Wherever you feel more grounded and stable and comfortable and safe. Let your breath be natural. So not forcing it to be any deeper than it has to be. And I want you to kind of peer into your pelvis or peel, peer into your body as if it, you could see a, a body of water. So in a bowl. So imagine like the pelvis being a bowl, holding your emotional energy. And just noticing if that bowl feels full, feels empty. It's okay if you don't sense anything at all. Just again, just breathing, putting your awareness there. If you can see water in your bowl, noticing if it has a color, a temperature, would it be cold water, warm water, moving water, slow water. Noticing if overall your emotional kind of watery body feels like it's dehydrated. Does it need some water? And if you sense that you could use some extra support, right, some cleansing, you might draw in water with your breath. So imagine like your breath in could be a water source that would restore your emotional body. It could be from a body of water that you really love. Maybe there's the Pacific Ocean that you want to draw it in. Maybe there's a beautiful river that you love, a lake. Just breathing that in. Kind of maybe filling up that bowl or just letting it go through your body. And again, just whatever you're getting, don't get too much in your head. This is just a visualization. If you feel like you're overflowing with water, and maybe the water's stagnant, maybe you need to pull the plug and let it drain. So kind of just letting your exhale release. Draining out excess emotional energy. Maybe you have to drain first and you want to fill back up. Maybe you just want your water to move and rock. So maybe you kind of imagining it rocking side to side. Kind of, ah, that kind of rocking waves that would put you to sleep or calm your nervous system. Take a neck, next maybe five breaths to just move your watery energy in a way that feels good. Filling it up, draining it, rocking it, maybe warming it with your breath if it feels cold. And then just let that work go and just rest. Take the next few moments just to be however you are. Don't focus the mind. Don't imagine anything. Don't breathe any certain way. Just let yourself be exactly as you are. Mind wandering, antsy, sleepy, however. I'm going to be sending you healing energy, comforting energy, calming, grounding energy. So see if you can feel that just by. You're just mere laying there, relaxing.
So reconnecting to maybe movement or your physical body in some way. Inviting yourself to stay exactly where you are for longer if you wish. And as you might feel ready to roll onto your side or to gather your knees in, coming up at whatever pace feels good. Taking your arms out to the side, stretching up as you breathe in, exhaling the hands to your heart, bowing towards your heart. Inhaling, reaching up. Exhaling. One more time, inhaling. Exhaling. With your hands gathered at your heart center, Maybe intending this week to be extra gentle in care, showing extra care for yourself, especially your emotional, your sensitive, your inner self. Doing what you can to calm that nervous system, to stabilize your body, to let your body feel good, and seeing the effects of your mind, your emotions, and everything else. Thanks for practicing, friends. Namaste.